As South Africans grapple financially due to high interest rate, inflation rate that continues to rise and food prices always going up, this has led to many South Africans indebted because of lower disposable income. The two-part system, as many people have been talking about, is here. Now we've invited Mr. Selemeni from the GEPF to come and unpack what exactly this means. Mr. Selemeni, welcome. Thank you very much, uh, and we are glad to be here. Maybe let's just start by you unpacking so that people can understand what exactly is the two-port system. The two-port retirement system is the new uh, reform introduced by government in order to deal with the two uh, things. Firstly, it, is, it intends to inculcate a culture of saving among South Africans. And this is because if you remember in 2020, 2020 exposed all of us that we are just a salary away from being poor. Because once we are not paid, or as a result of what was happening when the economy was uh, under lockdown, it then became apparent that South Africans do not save for rainy days. So one of the main ob uh, first objective of the two-port retirement system is to inculcate the culture of saving. The second one is to uh, force, for a lack of a better word, all working South Africans to preserve for retirement. Because in terms of the research that was done in the financial sector, it became apparent that only 6% of the working South Africans retire comfortably, which means they retire with income that can sustain their lives. Mm -hmm. The rest of the 94% of the working population in South Africa, when they retire, they, they had not saved enough and as a result, they are forced to join the social assistance in the form of uh, uh, SASA grants. So the introduction of this uh, two-port retirement system seeks to address those two anomalies. Mm -hmm. uh, and it intends to improve the retirement outcomes of the working South Africans. And we know for a fact that the prospect of having our members access their hard-earned savings is very appealing, but I'm sure there are pros and cons. How will this work for our 180,000 members, especially here in the SAPS? I know you've got a bigger pool in uh, government, but just for our members, are about 180,000. How will this system work? What this system entails is that come the 1st of September, all pension funds, including the government employees' pension fund, when we receive your contributions, each member of SAPS or public servant contributes 7.5% of his or her salary every month, and the employer adds 16%. So when we receive that 20, that would be 23.5%. Uh, of your contribution. The law says we must divide it into two, where 33% of that contribution mm -hmm. goes into the savings pot and two-thirds goes into the retirement pot. For an example, if your contribution every month combined with the employers is 3,000 rand, it means every month GPF will take a 1,000 rand, put it in your savings pot, and the 2000 goes into the retirement pot. Now, what is of concern to members is what then happens to my money that I have worked for before the 1st of September. What that means is all the savings a member has done up to the 31st of August will then be contained in the vested pot. So, while the law is a two-port retirement system, but for members that are currently in service, they are going to have three ports. Mm -hmm. So every cent that you, you have worked for up to the end of August 2024 will be contained in the vested port. Mm -hmm. So it is in that port where the law says 
because on the 1st of September, your savings pot will be empty because you would not have received your September contributions. And your retirement pot will be empty because you would not have received your September contribution. The law then says pension funds are required to take a seeding capital, a seeding capital from the vested because that is the only pot that will have money into the savings pot. How much is that saving uh, seeding capital? The law says it's 10% of your vested but kept at 30,000. Hence, from the discussions, you would have had people talking about going to have 30,000. But that's not how it works. Say, for instance, uh, let me make this example. You've got a new member of SAPS uh, that has just joined a year or two ago. By the end of August 2024, he or she has uh, earned or saved about 100,000 with the GPF. 10% of 100,000 is 10,000 rand. Mm. It therefore means GPF will transfer 10,000 rand from the vested pot of this person into the savings pot for a member's immediate access, should he or she wish so. However, for a person that has been in service for the past 20 years, this person has already accumulated about, let's say, a million rent. 10% of a million is 100,000 rent. But because of that proviso that says seeding capital is 10% of the vested but kept at 30,000, it means we can only transfer 30,000 and not 100,000, which is a 10% of a million. Mm -hmm. So what this means is that not every person is going to have a 30,000 transferred to his or her savings pot on the 1st of September. It is only people with 300,000 and above in their vested pot that are going to have 30,000 transferred. Any other thing less than 300,000 in your vested pot, in your third pot, it means you'll get 10% thereof. So it doesn't matter whether you've got a million rand or 10 million rand or 15 million rand in the vested pot. First of September, you can only access 30,000. That is a cap. Maximum. Yeah, that is the maximum that you can transfer from the vested into the savings pot. Okay. So, Constable Zamini has been in the SEPs for five years. He's got, let's say, 200,000 uh, in, in the vested pot. Mm. First of September, they're going to take 10% of that. Of the vested pot? Yes. It means 10% of 200,000 is 20,000 rent. Mm. Kep uh, uh, Constable Zamini will have 20,000 being transferred from his third pot or vested pot into the savings pot. Hence my, uh, my statement to say, not everybody is going to have 30,000 transferred mm. from the vested pot into the savings pot. Only members who ha have been in service for quite some time mm. and have accumulated from 300,000 and above mm. will have 30,000 being transferred from vested into savings. Anything less than 300,000, you will get 10% of whatever is contained in the, in the vested. Okay, so let's talk about the tax implications now. Assuming that uh, I've been in the service long enough to have, um, let's say, 30,000 rand in the savings pot. Come 1st of September, I want to claim for the 30,000 rand. What are the tax implications? Now, in terms of, although tax is a... South African uh, receiver of revenue uh, responsibility. I will try to explain it. Uh, and just as an addition, I would advise members to go into SARS website. Just last week, Thursday, they had a, uh, a webinar where they were explaining how uh, tax is going to be applied on withdrawals from the savings pot. As a summary, all withdrawals are going to be taxed at a marginal rate. What is a marginal rate? 
marginal rate is it means every uh, rent that you earn you must pay tax out of it and how it works is that the lower you earn the lower your tax uh, your tax marginal rate the higher you earn the higher your tax marginal rate for example any other person that earns less than or up to 250000 rent per annum when such a person makes a withdrawal say for instance he makes a withdrawal of that 30000 depending on his tax affairs because members should also be aware that sars is saying should you have not been submitting your tax return whatever you owe sars they will they will uh, they will take it from this withdrawal so what it means is that if you withdraw 30000 and you earn under 250000 per annum you will only get 22500 somewhere there but for a person who's earning uh, around 500000 550000 when you withdraw that 30000 you will get 19300 so it shows uh, it confirms what i was saying the higher you earn the higher you are taxed the lower you earn the lower you are taxed that's how it's mm -hmm. going to work unfortunately we cannot uh, deal with specifics it depends because what what sars do if i, I may uh, close it at this point what sars do say for instance you earn twenty thousand rent every month on that month when you have made that withdrawal when you receive that month sars adds that thirty thousand to your twenty thousand and then it then takes your tax brackets mm -hmm. up and then you get what remains thereafter that's what mm -hmm. is referred to as a marginal rate sure okay so uh, mr Suleiman, i know you are not a financial advisor mm -hmm. but let's assume that i don't want to touch this money for the next five years is that a good thing or a bad thing look probably as an advice to uh, members out there is that if you do not feel comfortable with this two-part retirement system and you would want to go out of the system with your pension intact as mm -hmm. if two-part system was never introduced your best option is not to withdraw pretend as if you do not have access to your money because any withdrawal in terms of the gpf members any withdrawal will affect your pensionable service and this is because the gpf unlike any other pension fund uses a different formula when they calculate your benefits mm. the formula that we use look at the number of years you have been contributing to the GPF or you have been in service, mm. we multiply that by an average notch of the last two years of your exit to get what becomes due to you. Mm. Example, if you have been in service for a period of 30 years and you are at a salary notch average low of 120,000, when you go on retirement, your pension value will be at around 3.6 million and so if you do not if you do not uh, withdraw that's what you will get mm. at the end but let's look at this example you have withdrawn and what you have withdrawn over a period of that five years is equivalent to one year of your service when you go on retirement gpf will not say you have been in service for 30 years multiply by that 120,000 because you have already withdrawn money equivalent to one year of your service so it will be 29 years multiply by 120,000 which will give you 3 3.480,000 so it means though you have withdrawn that amount but at the later stage when you go on retirement you would have uh, minus 120,000 off 
what you were supposed to get had you not withdraw. That's what it's meant by reduction of uh, mm -hmm. your pensionable service that goes with each withdrawal. So now, I read somewhere that if you resign after the 1st of September, you can't come to GPF and say, can I have all my money? No, no, it's not true. It is not true because part of the reason why people that are currently in service have got three ports as opposed to two ports is because the law in South Africa is not retrospective. It means it does not go back. It starts from the first moving forward. So that is why we said every cent that you have worked for from when you started working up until the 31st of August will be put into the vested port. And that vested port, it is governed by the current rules and not the new law. So should you want to resign post implementation, you will still be entitled, let's go back to that example, you have a million, we have taken 30,000 and put it into your savings port. You now have 970,000 in your vested port. That 970,000 will be paid to you as a resignation benefit. And whatever amount that is in your savings port will be paid to you as your resignation benefit. And there are rules that are governed in this retirement port that people are saying it means you will only access it when you reach the age of retirement. That is the intention. Mm -hmm. However, the provision is that should it not have more than 165,000 or 165,000 and above, it must be paid as a lump sum. So in your example, say a member decides to resign in the next five years and this person has been contributing 2,000 rand every month into the retirement port. It means at the end of five years, he or she will be having around 100,000 in the retirement port. So it therefore means such a member, when he resigns, all the three ports becomes available and mm -hmm. are paid as a lump sum. It is only if your retirement port has got 165,000 and above that the law says that money cannot be paid as a lump sum, but it must buy you monthly pension when you reach the age of retirement. And retirement in this case means early retirement being boarded on uh, medical grounds or going on a normal retirement. For as long as it ends with retirement, then that port becomes available to you. Okay, that makes sense. But now, as we wrap up our discussion, who can access uh, these uh, funds that are being made available 1st of September? Anybody from level three, general worker that we have in the SAPS, all the way up to the National Commissioner, for example? Can any of those people? In the GPF, I know in the private sector, they make a distinction. Uh, for instance, for those that are into uh, retirement annuities and provident funds, private sector makes a distinction and discourage people that are above the age of 55 to make a withdrawal on this two-port retirement system. But in the GPF, every member from salary level one to salary level 16, mm. you can withdraw at any point you wanna withdraw, provided you are still in service, obviously, and you understand the implications, tax implications, plus service reduction implications that are going to be uh, implemented should you make mm. a withdrawal. So there is no distinction. Mm. A constable up to a national commissioner can make a withdrawal okay. any time after the 1st of September. And I think finally, and this is a very important question that everybody is asking. So mm. come 1st of September, I make a claim on the 2nd of September. How long until I have the money in my pocket? Look, the law does not provide um, uh, for uh, that how long each pension fund should take to pay out whatever claim it is. In terms of the government employees pension law of 1996, GPF has got 60 days turnaround 
to process any exit claim. Now, working within that uh, context, we are saying to members, we will endeavor. Hence, we have made it uh, mandatory that claims should come via our app or self-service, be online. Because we want to endeavor to pay as soon as possible. However, guided within uh, the turnaround time provided by the JEP law or government employees pension law of 60 days to process a claim. So, example I may give, we may say we want to pay within 48 hours. And then come the 2nd of September on Monday next week, we get, we've got about just under 1.3 million members. If 500,000 of those people put their claims on the first day, uh, looking at the capacity that we have, we may not be able to pay each and every of that claim in 48 hours. Some will take longer depending on the information required or the information provided. However, like I said, mm. we have 60 days to process. However, we will endeavor to pay within as short as possible time we will have. Let's hope your system won't crash. The system, and probably just to wrap up the discussions, how people are going to process their claim. Obviously, when you resign or you go on retirement, you go via your HR. Mm -hmm. But because understanding that these withdrawals are intended for rainy days, and at the point when people are making that uh, uh, those claims, it would be because they are pressurized by their financial situation. So we have put a in our app that people need to have to register on GPF app. It can be downloaded on either iPhone or uh, Android. And the self-service that we have on our uh, website. Or should people not be comfortable with those two, they can walk into our any of our office and they will have a consultant assisting them to put their preference online. So you don't have to go via your HR, rather you do it online, you submit it, because the intention is that when we receive that, we should be able to, to uh, process it within a reasonable period. And before you submit your claim, you will get a quotation that shows you how much you are withdrawing, what is the tax implication on what you are withdrawing, and lastly, what is your service, uh, pensionable service implications based on the amount that you are withdrawing? Mm. So people will not be, be caught by surprise. You will know before you press the claim button that here I have withdrawn 30,000. This 30,000 is equivalent to four months of my pensionable service that is going to be reduced. And in terms of tax, this is the amount that is going to be taken, and this is the amount that I'm going to be receiving out of that 30,000. Let me thank you very much, Mr. Seliman. This was very, very educational for me. I think I've learned a, two, a thing or two, and I've read about it, but I think you've managed to sum it up quite nicely. There I you have it. it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have learned a thing or two, but do make sure you think about the decision you're about to make so that it doesn't affect you in the future. Thank you very much.